There's a big difference about how Excel stores the values in cells and how it presents them. In this lecture, you will learn required skills to format numbers and especially dates and times. Here we have roughly the value of pi constant in six cells. From the sum column, you see that the numbers make 18.84 in total. Now we will change the number presentations of these cells without altering the actual values. I will choose the number format for each cell according to the header row. Formatting the first cell to a number has no effect as Excel has recognized this as number already. I will probably make some mathematicians angry by choosing zero decimal places to the second pi value from this little button. But I take the chance. Now select date and time format for corresponding columns. These values probably won't make any sense to you right now, but they will be explained soon. Finally, select the percentage and the currency from the list. It might be that some values such as date, time and currency are slightly different in your sheet because of Excel's localization settings. The important thing now is that the sum is still 18.84 which means that Excel didn't change any of the values in the background, but only the number formats that are visible to you. If you don't find the number format that you are looking for from the Home Tabs drop-down, you can right-click the cell, choose Format Cells and select Numbers tab. Take advantage of existing number formats or create a customized one. One more thing about the number formats. In this example, we first typed a number and then selected a number format. But most often, Excel identifies the intended number format automatically. For example, you can just type 90% and Excel will store the number as 0 0.9 and convert the number format to percentage on the background. Ok, let's switch the topic to date formatting. Excel has a built-in date-time system that is based on positive decimal numbers. The integers represent dates. The Excel calendar starts from 1st of January 1900. That day equals to number 1. Every time you increase the number by 1, you go one day further in the calendar. So number 2 is the 2nd of January, number 3 is the 3rd of January and so on. Today, almost 43,000 days have passed since the beginning of the Excel calendar. Let's copy these numbers to the second column. Now, when you format numbers 1, 2, 3 and 43,000 as dates, you should understand what happens. Alright, how about the time calculations? In Excel, 0 is the starting point of the time measurement. Number 1 equals 24 hours and respectively 0 0.5 would be 12 hours. The 24 hour system is meant to display the time of day. In the 24 hour format only the decimal part of number values matter and the integers are meaningless. For example both 0 0.5 and 1.5 equal to 12 hours. For a demo I copy the values from the first column and format them as time. As I said, both 0 0.5 and 1.5 represent 12 o'clock, that is midday. When time exceeds 24 hours, you should use the continuous format. It would be more suitable for expressing weekly or monthly working hours, for example. Let's copy the values from the first column to the column C. Open the Format Cells dialog and from the time section select a format that supports hours bigger than 24. In continuous format 0 0.5 is still 12 hours but 1.5 is 24 plus 12 which makes it 36 hours. At the end of this lecture let's make a rehearsal with these historical events. First I will add one more date time here. Then I quickly flash you the decimal numbers that these date times represent. Now the mission is to fill out these columns. 
Extracting the month and the minute from the date time is relatively easy as the formulas have corresponding names. I compose the formulas and paste downwards. The week before isn't too hard either. Just subtract number 7 from the date. The last one is little trickier as not all the months have equal number of days. You have to use eomonth function which stands for end of month. As the first parameter it takes the date and the second parameter is how many months ahead you want to calculate. Because we are talking about the current month the second parameter is zero. Finally I change this to date time. That's all. After this lecture you should remember that there's a big difference how the users see the numbers and how Excel stores them.